Hi guys, I've been getting a lot of requests to make a video on how to hit the ball harder. So today I'm going to go through three steps to achieving effortless power. The ability to hit the ball hard is a great tool to have as it can allow you to apply pressure to your opponent by hitting quickly into the space to force them to make fast, heavy movements to retrieve it. It's also important to be able to hit with enough pace to be able to straighten balls out the back corners and to hit deep in the court. Obviously, there are many other reasons why it's important to be able to hit hard, but I'll wait till later in the video to reveal them. It's also not always good to hit hard, but I'll cover that in another video. Before we get to the first step, the first thing we have to acknowledge is that this has very little to do with strength and is almost entirely down to technique. There's a reason why I'll be able to generate a great deal more power with a short swing than the world's strongest man will with a full swing. This is good news for everyone as it means that anyone can learn to do this no matter your strength or size. Now let's get right into it. The first step is to rotate your shoulders. I see a lot of newer players facing towards the front wall when trying to hit the ball, and I even see decent club level players not rotating their shoulders far enough around. The issue with not doing this is that you're forcing your arm to do all the work which will limit the power, as rotating your shoulders will allow all the muscles in your shoulders and core to work together to produce the swing. This also leads to having more control too as you're not having to put as much effort into the shot to generate pace. This is all emphasised even more on the backhand as the muscles on the outside of the arm are naturally weaker than those on the inside that are used for the forehand. This means that the rotation of the shoulder is even more crucial to generating consistent pace on the backhand. Another issue with not rotating enough is that it doesn't allow the natural follow through to go to the target as your shoulders will open up towards the front wall unless you manually stop your swing. This means that you can't release the follow through fully for maximum power while also keeping the ball straight and tight. Here are some examples of how to do it versus how not to do it. My shoulders are rotated round to the point where you can actually see my back from the front wall. This allows me to rotate the trunk of my body around to generate the shot. In this one you can see I'm facing the front wall. This means I have to rely on my wrist and forearm to generate the shot which is a lot weaker than using my shoulder and core muscles. The second step is to transfer your weight through the ball. This step has multiple parts to it, the first of which is having a relaxed hand and arm, as well as having your knees bent. If you're too stiff when you hit the ball, all the energy will be lost as you strike it, leading to limited power. We have to allow the energy from our swing to flow through our whole body and into the ball, so we don't want too much tension in our hand, arm and legs. We ideally want just enough tension to be able to fully control our movements and be in a solid position while still remaining relaxed and fluid. Sorry for interrupting the video, but I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel as it really helps me produce more content like this. The next part of this is to time our step towards the ball so we're stepping just as we strike it. I see a lot of club players step too early so all the energy is lost from the weight transfer. The key is that we want our weight to go from our back foot forwards through our front foot and into the ball. This means we have to give the ball enough space so that we can step towards it without getting too close. Notice how my front foot is also facing at a 45 degree angle to the front wall rather than towards the side wall. This is to further emphasise the forward motion that we want to achieve. For weight transfer to work, you have to get your body weight behind the ball. The faster we move onto the ball while still remaining in control of our movement, the more pace we can generate as more energy is transferred into the ball. Again, the backhand relies heavily on this due to the weaker muscles involved. The third step is to use the appropriate wrist motion. If you've ever wondered how top players can straighten the ball out of the back corners from behind them so easily, or generate so much pace from an almost non-existent swing, this is how they achieve it. By having our wrist cocked and tipped back, energy is stored in there waiting to be released. Then we can snap it through whenever we want to be able to inflict maximum damage. The motion should be similar to that of skimming a stone on water. The wrist allows us to increase our racket head speed, which therefore increases our power. It also allows us to be deceptive, as we can change what shot we're going to hit at the last second without a change to our racket preparation, or despite having a short backswing. This will heavily disrupt an opponent's movement as they have to stop and wait for you to play your shot, which will ultimately slow them down and tie them out. Here's an example of this. Every other tip so far also relies on us getting our body weight behind the ball to some extent. While in an ideal world, it would be great to be able to achieve this with every shot, as squash is a dynamic sport, we can't always rely on this. 
This technique allows us to straighten balls that are behind us that would otherwise be impossible to get back without hitting a boast. This changes everything as it means you don't have to hit a boast and give your opponent the tee whenever they hit a decent length past you. It's important for me to mention that when hitting basic shots, you shouldn't be using the wrist to generate the shot itself. It should be released as you strike the ball, which will speed up the racket head and therefore lead to increased power. Too much wrist and arm movement will lead to a drop in accuracy and consistency. A good way to know if you're generating enough racket head speed is to swing without the ball and to listen to the sound the strings make through the air. The only times that you will exclusively use the wrist to generate the shot itself is either when you're forced to scramble and dig a ball out from behind you or you're using a sudden disguise variation. As I mentioned before, due to the nature of the wrist motion being more difficult to replicate perfectly, the consistency of shots played like this will be lower than those where the wrist is only released on the follow through. At the end of the day, to achieve effortless power it's important to follow all of these steps. When they're all combined it's extremely easy to put pace on the ball while still maintaining full control of everything in the process. Just remember that hitting hard without accuracy will just lead to you having to work harder, whereas doing it with good accuracy will cause a great number of issues for your opponent. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something new today. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. See you next time.